two-year versus four-year degree programs with regards to positions in IT. Several of you have had conversations in the forums about what makes a good IT person and how much of a role does your education play in the jobs that you get in IT. For those of you who aren't aware, I dropped out of a whole bunch of degree programs, but I did in fact go to Michigan State University and I went there for two years. Now, I was in a unique position at Michigan State in that what I was learning was not really from the teachers, it was from the people that were surrounded around me. And I lived in an engineering dorm and got that engineering vibe all day every day and got to work on as part of helping classmates and seeing what they were working on a lot of very cool projects and that really fostered a sense of what being an engineer was going to be like later on you wouldn't have gotten that same experience if you had gone to Michigan State and lived off campus and so in that sense it wasn't the curriculum of the college that mattered. It was the feel of the campus and what you were learning from your peers and from just being part of the environment. For this reason, colleges and universities vary wildly in what they offer. One of the schools that was very near me growing up was Tri-State University in Angola, Indiana. And Tri-State had a pretty rich engineering organization when I was back in high school in 1997. And I think that I could have gone to Tri-State University and gotten a lot of what I got out of Michigan State, but I wouldn't have had access to some of the really cool things that were going on at Michigan State. When I was at Michigan State working on different projects, we did things like calculate how much how to make the best heat sink in order to melt a block of ice in a certain amount of time and that was an example of something you could have done at any college but we were also doing things like working on sun workstations you know we dialed into the spark workstations to do our homework from our dorm rooms over the campus ethernet and that wasn't something that you could have done at just any college at the time michigan state had in in college leading, education leading, institute leading, that's the word I'm looking for, institute leading technologies. And you could go over to the engineering building and the labs had fantastic equipment available to you. Again, something that wasn't really available if I had gone to Tri-State University very near where I grew up. If you go to MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, you're going to be surrounded by very smart people and work on a lot of interesting projects as part of your education. So if you put MIT on your resume because you attended there and graduated from there, that means a lot. In fact, if you even only did two years at MIT, that means a lot because the acceptance program for MIT requires not only that you have good grades, but you've done the engineering things and you know, worked in extracurricular activities that they think that you're going to be a good fit for the culture at MIT. This is where education really varies from institute to institute. If you come from MIT, you can walk into any Silicon Valley company and put your resume out and you are going to get a phone call for any position you're reasonably qualified for. The same is roughly true of Stanford in the, for the most part. But in the Silicon Valley area, there's really two types of corporate climates, and they vary on whether or not they are founded by East Coast or West Coast educated people, or whether they're founded by someone who's more like me, who's a college dropout that doesn't have a culture of either of those types. Google is all about the people from MIT, and you get huge bonuses in terms of credibility if you came from MIT when you applied to Google. Now, there's starting to be a group of Stanford people at Google, 
but Google puts a lot of weight on where you have gone to school. And what school you went to is more important than the degree program that you were in for the most part. Other organizations, people will say, oh, as long as you have a college degree, you must be trainable and therefore you're worth hiring. And they wouldn't care whether you had a degree in English or computer science as long as you had a four-year degree. I personally won't work in a company that has that philosophy. I don't believe that underwater basket weaving qualifies you for anything more than being the receptionist and might not even make you qualified for that. And that it's really about the culture of where you went to school and what you took away from your time at that school. That's why two-year programs don't carry a lot of weight with me. For the most part, when you go to a two-year program, you're not getting any of that school culture. You're getting information that's force-fed to you, and you're getting a set of tests that are being taught in order to prove that you meet the accreditation and the certificate program that you're in. And so, like I said, I don't put a whole lot of weight on that for the same reason that I don't put a whole lot of weight on people who only have certifications or have a large number of certifications. All of that said, when I'm hiring somebody, I look at what is their background and how much experience do they have. You can't get that first job without either some experience or some education. And so you end up in this conundrum of, do you work as a person pulling cables for two years, hoping to get a job managing desktops so that you can advance to being an IT administrator? Or do you go to somewhere like ITT Tech and say, I have a two year degree, I know how to manage desktops and jump into that role managing desktops. So either way, you get the job managing the desktop and after you've done that for a year, you might get a job you know, being an IT manager or managing network stuff or, you know, going on to the next stage and you just keep advancing. But at some point you had to get that first job in order to get your sort of, in order to get, you know, that opportunity to go on to a job that might make you qualified for the job that you want so that you can get to the job that I would hire you for. And you have to balance the cost of going to that two-year program versus working for two years. You know, really it's, did I spend, you know, $30,000 to go to school or did I make $40,000 going to work for two years for a lot less money than I was worth in order to get real world experience? And that's a personal decision you have to make based on the opportunities that are available in your area and whether or not you think you learn better from hands-on and whether you have the opportunities to work in an organization that's going to give you the hands-on experience in order to advance or whether you're better off going to a school that has a good placement program and you're going to have a high probability of getting that job right out of school. And that placement program can be worth a lot. I have always found it easy to get jobs as long as I'm willing to take the job that I can get. Other people don't have that. And so placement programs can be worth a lot because you have somebody who is basically being a recruiter for you, finding you that first job to give you a start in the industry. So that's the other thing to weigh is just how good are you at finding your first job so that you can decide whether or not you need that help from the, your school. Because $30,000 in order to find your first job as a result of placement could be worth that without the education, and the education would just be bonus. So that's my philosophy on two-year, four-year degree programs and how they all stack up against each other. And I know I didn't provide you any straight answers of, should I get a two-year or four-year degree and which college should I go to? I can only provide you information so that you can make the decision that's right for you.